All right, let's look at how to figure out the amortization of bond premium or interest or a discount by the effective interest method. First, let's look at the basic information of the bonds. You have $100,000 bonds, $100,000 worth of bonds. We're going to be paying 9% interest. The market rate is 8%, so they're going to issue at a discount, I mean at a premium, because the market rate is lower than the than the rate the bondholders will get from us, so they're willing to pay a premium. These are five-year bonds paying interest semi-annually. Um, the amount of the interest payment is going to be $4,500, which is 9% times 100,000 divided by 2. The number of payments are 10, and that's going to be important. And here we come to the calculation of the present value of the bonds. You're going to calculate the present value of the principal, the $100,000 you're going to get in five years, with 10 semi-annual interest uh, periods, and um, then the present value of the payments of $4,500 you're going to get every six months. So what you do is you calculate the present value of the bonds, uh, of the of the uh, uh, principal using the market rate, and this is what this is. Here's the equation. Real quickly, I'll go over that. The um, B3 is the in, the effective interest rate, the market rate, divided by two because these are semi-annual periods. There are ten uh, interest periods. There's no payment in this uh, item. We're not going to get. Uh, individual payments on the principal, we're going to get the principal at the end, so no payments. And then in the future, five years from now, ten interest periods from now, we'll receive $100,000. And the amount of the, um, uh, and we're going to multiply it by negative one just because uh, the present value equation always yields a negative number. You just turn that into a positive number. So at the, the present value of the $100,000 we're going to get in five years is 67556 42 we do the same calculation for the uh, the number of in, the interest payments. Again, the effective interest rate is is eight percent. This this right here is B three. Eight percent divided by two, ten interest periods, and we're going to get forty five hundred dollars. I just put a negative in front of that so I could get so I could turn it into a, a positive number without doing it, multiplying it by a negative one. You get a forty five hundred dollar um, uh, payment every six months. And the zero here is the type of annuity that this is. So this, is a, this is the present value of, annuity, of an annuity. And the, the, the zero means that it is a, an annuity in arrears, means we get the payment at the end of each period. If, it were a, if we put a one there, it'd be the payment would be received at the beginning of each period. We're going to get the payment at the end of every six months. So that turns out to be 36,409903 for a total present value of $104,055.45. We do the same thing and compute it using the coupon rate. And the only thing we change is this, this uh, figure here where we're getting the, the coupon rate uh, to calculate our present value. You can see the present values are um, uh, a little bit lower for each of them because uh, as interest interest grows so fast, the present we wouldn't have to invest as much to end up with the hundred thousand dollars at the end of the year or end of ten into five years. So the difference between these, the present value at the market rate and the present value at the coupon rate is um, four thousand fifty five dollars and forty five cents. That's the that's the uh, premium. Now if we if we truncate our present value figures, the present value multipliers, and here I've put them down, you can see that I've put the present value multiplier for the uh, principal and for the uh, annuity of the of the interest payments. I come up with a a little bit different um, uh, premium. So here I, here I'm going to use the uh, the rounded value. The beginning carry value of forty of one hundred four thousand one hundred dollars. The effective interest rate is four percent, which is um, the half of the eight percent of the market rate, because we're doing this every six months. So beginning carrying value at the, at the when we issue the bonds is one hundred four thousand one hundred dollars, based on this uh, 
present value calculation. Interest expense is basically just taking the carrying the beginning carrying value times the effective interest rate. It gives me um, uh, $4,164. The amount of the payment I'm going to make is five is forty-five hundred dollars. So the difference between forty-five hundred dollars and the amount in the interest expense is the amount of the a premium I'm amortizing. So the, I'm amortizing in this payment $336. So of the carrying value of $100,000 of $100,000 plus my premium of $4,100 and I'm amortizing $336 of this, then my uh, um, carrying value becomes $103,764 104 100 minus the 336 gives me this new carrying value. The entry to record this as a uh, as an adjusting entry would be debit interest expense for this amount, the amount of the interest expense of course, debit the bond premium for the amount of the premium being amortized and the interest payable is going to be the amount of the payment that I'm making right there. Okay, we do that each each six months. We bring the new the, the ending carrying value down to the beginning, that begin, and we do the calculation for interest. We subtract the amount of the interest expense from the uh, forty five hundred dollar payment we're making, and that gives us our amortized premium. And you can see that each each six months we amortize a little bit more of the premium. And at the end, if you do the calculation. It's not quite three thousand nine hundred and fifty-five dollars. In fact, we can do that. We come up with four thousand twenty-one dollars and eighty cents, a uh, difference of whatever that is, seventy dollars nearly. But we, uh, but at, at this last payment, we have to pick up all the rounding that we've had in this this whole area. We've had some rounding in each one of these. And so um, uh, we have to force this figure to be right, to be this, so that we can get our our premium, the last five hundred and forty-five dollars of it, amortized off, and end up with a face value and a carrying value equal to the to the to each other at the end of the uh, end of the five-year term. So that's with rounding. If we did it without rounding, we would have the same thing. We would just we would use this figure. As our care, as beginning carrying value, again multiply by the half the effective interest rate for the half year that we're using, and then interest expense becomes whatever these two calculate to be. Subtract this from uh, for the beginning uh, premium, and you get the premium amortized. The the interest the uh, the repayment the, I mean the uh, accrual is the same interest expense. On premium, interest payable, and do that all the way down. We don't have any rounding at the bottom because it all worked out. Now you'll notice that the premium being amortized goes up, the interest expense goes down because our carrying value is going down that we're computing our interest expense on. So interest is a, a constant percentage of the beginning carrying value. Now in straight line amortization, our interest expense stays the same, even though our carrying value is going down each each six months. The amortized premium amount stays the same. So this interest expense is a is a changing percentage of the beginning carrying value under straight line amortization. And that's how we do uh, a, a premium, a discount. The same situation. Uh, here we have. The same bond with a coupon rate of 10 and a market rate of 12, which means we're going to get a discount. You can do the calculations, but the, the bond discount with rounding is 7361, leaving a value of $92,639. And that's what I'm going to use for my beginning carrying value. The, Q, the interest rate, effective interest rate is 12%, so I'm going to use half of that for my effective rate here. And I'm going to come up with uh, interest expense, and then the amortized premium is going to be the payment here, $5,000 minus 
the int I mean, uh, the entry expense minus, in this case, the $5,000 gives me the amortized discount. In this case, the interest expense is here. The discount, we're going to credit that number, credit the discount amortized, and the credit interest payable. Okay, the next one is pre is, oops, let me make this a little bit smaller so we can get it to fit on the screen. And this is the same thing we did the first time. Um, uh, just a, a little different look at it, so we don't have to really do anything there. But this is uh, premium, discount, and then the premium again. The premium again, I made it look just like an example in the book uh, that we have. So that's why I have it premium again. You notice that the uh, interest rate is 10, the market rate is, market rate is 8. So we have a, a $5,000 payment I'm going to be making. Uh, so my interest expense looks a little different each time ah. and I'm still using the effective interest rate of eight divided by two for each time each each period each six month period still have the same uh, premium uh, premium on the on the one hundred thousand dollars so I just made this look exactly like a, an example in the book let's see here Okie dokie. Um, and that's how we do a discount and premium amortization under the effective interest method.